You know, Internet, I want to be different. Your boy wants to be subversive, but something stupid happens and he just gets dragged back into that commentary shit because he can't resist the urge but argue with some middle-aged person on the Internet. But today, it really is kind of personal, you know? I guess you could say that I'm making a house call. And let me clarify something here. The person who got their video striked, Hoover, right? I am not defending him because he is my friend. Right? If he was in a dumb situation because of his own doing, I wouldn't defend him because, I, in my opinion, I, I just wouldn't see a reason to. But me defending him does align with my ethics. So who is the monster of the week, right? Who, who's in trouble this time? Well, it's Ray William Johnson, the artist, the creator, the host of Equals 3. Anyway, this viral video is called... Now, you all know who Ray William Johnson is. He's famous for making vaguely the same dead baby joke thousands of times while a cat backflips in the background. Somehow these things are vaguely related. You laugh, the video's funny, it's cute, you go on with your life. You know, I, I watch Ray's stuff now and it seems to have the comedic timing of a Toblerone being hydraulically pressed up some degenerate's asshole. Man, Spider-Man coming out of someone's rectum. Ray, in many ways, is like the original commentator. He's the original commentary channel, right? He poked fun of the things that were happening, he gave extra context to what was going on, gave extra information, you know? And he had jokes sprinkled in there, you know? It was a fun time on Equals 3. That's what it was all about, you know? He, he captured that kind of genre of content before, in my opinion, many other people did. You know, Ray existed in a simpler time where viral videos were at the top of the marketplace, you know, uh, the platform didn't have two brothers whose last names end in Paul, and uh, we didn't have this annoying Asian with social relevancy dependency issues. It seems like the internet has an odd hatred for cops, like they always want to film them and then bitch about how they're losing their constipational rights. So keep that in mind when you watch this video called The Arrest of a Saudi Prince. I, I mean, you look at this video now, and honestly, it it holds up pretty well, especially Ray's older content where um, it, it, it just gets really... Man, those jokes with the dead babies are kind of funny because uh, irony. His comedy did get better though, um, closer to the end of his run on Equals 3, I will say that. There's just something uh, great about a well-timed joke that has narrative relevance to the video that we're watching. So, you know, take that for what you will. When you tell a story, the joke should probably have something to do with it or at least be really fucking funny. I guess you could say his comedy got more mature and less 90s gross out humor as his career went on. I, I, I think that would be a good way to put it because you know, you can only say the N-word so many times before it's not funny anymore. Boy, I can't, I can't wait for that to be taken out of context. Point of the matter here is, is that Ray's jokes just have not aged well in a lot of cases, you know, but he, he's proud of his work and I get that. And I would be offended too if I'm an artist, right, and some Yahoo comes out of nowhere insulting the thing that I worked real hard on. You know, I, I, I'm being deliberately inflammatory in this video, you know, and, and like, I get where Ray's coming from, where you really put your heart and soul into something and then it doesn't really turn out how you want it to down the line or it doesn't just age well. Like, Lord Almighty, look at the music. This song has aged worse than Hillary Clinton. Bitch got a penis, bitch got a penis. Yeah, anyway, that song is called Transphobic Techno, AKA Bitch Got a Penis. Personally, I really like the title Bitch Got a Penis because it's just, so, so not 2019. <laughs> you know, compared to new commentary, compared to this self-aware, postmodernist, ironic commentator, you know, the like internet sensation branding, the whole bitch lasagna thing from PewDiePie, right? Where it's all self-aware and we all know it's like a joke, right? Well, Ray's not really like that. And I think that's really what separates him from commentators now is that when Ray makes a joke, you're supposed to find it funny because it was a funny joke, not because it was like a bad joke or it was an awful thing to say. You know, you wanted to both take Ray seriously, but also take him seriously in being seriously funny. You know, I'd love to know if people found him seriously funny, but Equals 3 has all of their comments disabled. Now, I get it, that can happen, you know, it, it, just, it just happens. If you want to disable comments, fine, right? But it, it gets really interesting because I went looking for former hosts 
and people who worked on equals three and uh not many people are active online anymore so i guess a lot can change in about six years and you know i rag on equals three but it is a cornerstone of internet history in a way you know i, I really do respect that i don't want to make it seem like i just don't like the guy you know i rag on ray but i have a lot of respect for him you know i, I and i look at that ridiculous hair and i'm like god it looks like the aft end of a hedgehog in heat but then on the other hand that's ray william johnson's hair you know I, I i see a lot of the whole artist mentality that i see with joji in ray except where george miller had resounding success ray kind of floundered in his past and didn't really evolve that was one of the main points i was making with my joji video is the ability to change and grow with time and ray seemed to be doing that for a while with his comic book and all of that stuff but then it just kind of petered out you know like there's a reason people look on doing your mom or hey mr douchebag now and kind of just wince at the sight of these lyrics like Oh my god. You're a douchebag. 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 You're a douchebag. Douchebag. I don't know. For me, the, the the music kind of inhabits that whole like Shrek ironic appeal. Granted, Shrek 1 and 2 are masterpieces of movies, but like, yeah, I can't take Shrek seriously anymore. And and I think Ray wants to be taken seriously, but this just solidified it as uh, no nobody's going to take you seriously. Anyway, Ray's career might be something I make a video on in the future. I don't know. I, I actually find it very fascinating, and I have a lot of respect for the guy in that regard. And it, it, it's... I, I just can't let that go from myself, you know, which is why I'm conflicted about what's happened. Because I want to like Ray so, so bad. I do. I want to. I don't know. Maybe it's a weird form of Stockholm Syndrome, because I see this guy grow from nothing to something, and that's something I aspire to do become nothing <laughs> well if i was on my way to irrelevancy all it would take is one copyright strike from ray william johnson the point of the matter here is like dude what the hell happened and i'm not asking that for your like movie or business careers um i i know what the hell happened with that i just have a pension for long-winded exposition and extra information to feed to my audience because I think I should be educational but also funny. No, my issue is, is that I grew to like you so much over the course of researching you and, and doing this that I just can't fathom why you would copyright strike this video. Like, like you just come off as this unself-aware boomer, right? Like, oh my god. God, you have this podcast with Epic Lloyd called Kings of Influence, and fine, that's a fine name for a podcast, but like, if you're not gonna be self-aware about yourself at all, and you actually think yourself as a de facto opinion on things on the internet when you've been gone for like, fucking a millennia in internet ages, you know, I, I, I just can't look at a name like Kings of Influence and go, those guys know what they're talking about, they're clearly not boomers. And you know, I, I tried to reach out to Ray or any of these other people, right? And, and I, you know, I, I tried to leave a comment on the Kings of Influence channel and the uh, comments are set to approval only. Oh yes, what a way to create an echo chamber. Just block out anybody who disagrees. Yeah, I like seeing comments like this. These really brighten my day. Oh, st d d Screw you, Roberto, you fundy prick. I've met plenty of creative and talented people in the space of commentary, okay? And even in drama. Like, are you serious? Don't discredit a whole genre because you don't like what goes on in it, or somebody being negative bothers you. You know, I don't want to be negative all the time. It makes me literally want to jump off a bridge. I hate it. I'm miserable when I do that. I don't like doing videos like this. I really don't. Th there's a lot that can be done with the commentary genre and format, so don't fucking throw it out a window, especially when the person you're watching right now is Ray William Johnson. Like. Screw you, no one's gonna pay for your $600 coaching. God. Literally, you can go on Twitter and every single one of your mentions, Ray, are about Hoover's video. You've seen it, you knew exactly what you did, okay? I Like, you of all people who has an undergraduate degree in law, right, should know, um, ooh, uh, maybe I shouldn't copyright strike a video um, and then say I own all of it, right? Because I watched that video and I didn't know that you have a uh, license and ownership over somebody like Hoover and his friends talking and, and them just cracking wise. I didn't know you owned that. That's weird, man. 
Oh, that's that's really strange. And by the way, can we look at your Twitter follower count? Wow, Ray. Is someone botting followers? Be a shame if someone were to do a Twitter audit of you today. And I wanna like Ray so bad, I really do. Because I, I see this genuine, passionate artist and this someone who wants to be something and, and you know, it's, it's the classic American dream right there. And I support that 100%. But then I also feel like you got some issues with YouTube, like, like it bothers you, like you have some kind of slimy anti-opinion about it. Right, that something about it just does not sit well with you. And that's fine if you want to move on to Hollywood and be with the big shots. But like, fine, okay, Here, here's the thing. You, you, you don't like YouTube? You wouldn't have a career in this field had it not been for you making videos in your college dorm. And, and let's talk about that court case you had with Junkin Media. You want to talk about that, right? Um, this, this is great because, wow, um, you lost. I think anybody who loses a fair use related case would know a lot about fair use by the time they're done. You were getting dicked around by Junkin Media, were you not? So now you're gonna turn around and be the same way Junkin Media was. To Hoover. That's great. That's hilarious. My god, how the mighty have fallen. You know, I I'm no professional, but I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that Hoover's video is in fair use. I I'm fairly certain it was fair use, okay? You know, they cracked wise and did kind of like a little roast of the music and the things that you make. And you know what? An artist should be able to take criticism. I, I like, I'm sorry, like, I'm an artist. I, I, I identify as an artist, as a YouTuber. I identify as an artist, as a creator, you know? And so I get it. People saying stupid shit about your video annoys the hell out of you. I can't stand it. Where I make a joke and people take me seriously because I can't tell the difference between sarcasm and seriousness. You know, they, like, there's tons of things that I get annoyed about too. And maybe I'll respond with a snarky comment, you know, because I think I'm hilarious and I and I know that I'm allowed to because this is America. But, you know, I, I feel like it's an overreach of power to do this. Like this copyright strike was so poorly done that it could get you to lose again, Ray. You don't wanna lose again, Ray. You lost once, you wanna lose again. You know, Ray, these are rookie mistakes for the king of influence. Th there is no reason for a strike to be on Hoover's video. Like, there's just not. Like, you, you truly are, in my opinion, a hypocrite. You're a hypocrite. And I know that word is thrown a lot on, yep, almost made it 20 minutes without fucking fucking up the recording. Look, I know the word hypocrite is thrown around on YouTube like fucking candy, but you, you're a hypocrite. Like you are the definition of a hypocrite. I, I'd be hard pressed to argue that you own all 12 minutes and 33 seconds of Hoover's video. Like, are you serious? Are you kidding me? Like, had it just been a portion of the video that was just your singing and uh, like audio and all that, then like, sure, fine. I would have seen it, I probably wouldn't be doing a video on this, I'd just be like, Hoover, you should just, you know, appeal the claim and hope for the best. But like, by you copy striking his video, you have made the situation for yourself a hundred times worse. Imagine if someone like PewDiePie got involved or saw this and you ended up on Pew News. Look, that's like literally Jesus Christ getting involved in your argument. Like, this boy is gonna turn water into wine and turn you into a bad early 2000s haircut. Like, you, you seriously know what needs to be done. Like, this is absolutely freaking ridiculous. Like, there is no reason for you to be whipping out your intellectual property cock and waving it around at people who make fun of your music. You know, li literally while I was writing and, and doing this video and scripting it and like recording it, because I do everything at the same time and I like to die, um, like someone is actually going to release the claim on Hoover's video. So hopefully by the time the video is out, uh, Hoover's video will be back up. But um, this shouldn't have happened in the first place. Look, Ray, you think you think you have license to put this on video? You think you, can, you think you can get away with that? Okay. Let's see how that goes, right? Imagine you copy strike this video. Imagine. Now I'm only a little bigger than Hoover, but boy, boy am I a lot more irritating than Hoover would be. I hate it when people abuse the copyright system. So like, you can best bet that I am never gonna forget this. I'm really not. All right guys, well that was this video. It's kind of an angry rant. Anyway, aside from that, 
Um, next video should be about a creator I really love. Um, I'm gonna do another video essay. So hopefully that'll be out soon, but if it's not, something else will be out. Okay, get out of here. Go go follow me on social media. Uh, here, here's the patrons. Hopefully I remember to put them up this time. Sorry about that. Anyway, have a good day, guys. And Ray, I hope you have a good day, too. Because I'm watching. Thank you.